Chapter 3 Thursday afternoon was Annie's memorial service. I got up, ate a few saltines, and drank small sips of the ginger ale that Alexis had recommended the day before. Once I had something in my stomach, the nausea seemed to pass, and I was able to go into work. I called a co-worker and asked for a ride to the office. It was on her way, so she didn't mind stopping. Mr. Willoughby was glad to see me feeling better. I'd arranged to take the time off to go to the service before calling in sick the day before, so I wore a dark suit to work and took the afternoon off. I sat in the back of the church, not wanting to disturb anyone if my nausea returned and I had to leave suddenly. Even with the distance, I couldn't help but notice that Bill and Karen were there, as well as Alexis and Hank. Seeing them reminded me that I needed to tell them about the paper I'd found under my door Monday evening. I'd intended to tell him sooner, but after the surprising news Alexis gave me yesterday, I'd forgotten. Following the service, as people started to file out, I tried to catch Bill's eye. Instead, I caught Alexis's husband Hank's attention. He waited patiently to one side of the stream of people headed for the door, for me to get to him. Did you know Annie? He stepped into the line beside me. We went to school together, though I hadn't really spoken to her in years. She was one of us, right? He nodded once. Are the four of you going to the graveside? No, he shook his head. We've paid our respects here. We're going to meet at Bill's to discuss this. Would you mind if I came? I have something I think you need to see. Hank lifted one brow. Sure. Come on over, I'll let Bill know you're on your way. Thanks, I smiled, but can I get a ride too? I came with a co-worker, my car's in your back lot. A crease formed on his brow. Yeah, of course. I need to let Brenda know I've got a ride. Where can I meet you? We're parked at the rear of the church. All right, I'll let her know and be right there. Thanks again. I went in search of the co-worker and friend who'd given me a ride. I let her know I had a ride home and thanked her for giving me a ride this afternoon, then met Hank and Alexis near their car. We gathered in Bill and Karen's living room, the Anakidos, Bill, his mate and the pack selecto, Karen, the Lysandros, Hank, his mate and our harmonia as well as the pack healer, Alexis, Terry, the enforcer who spent afternoons keeping Bill safe, as well as myself. Nikki mentioned she had something she needed to show us. Hank said to the rest of the group, explaining my presence. I felt everyone in the room look at me. The attention didn't make me nervous, I knew everyone in the room, but my stomach was slightly upset. I wasn't sure if it was the pregnancy or the stress of the situation. I took a deep breath. I knew Annie in school, we weren't close but we were friendly. I saw the news story about her murder Monday morning, before work. It was shocking and horrible, but I didn't think that much of it. I went to work and dealt with the phone calls about it all day long, otherwise it was business as usual. That evening when I got home I found this. I pulled the folded paper out of my purse and handed it to Bill, who happened to be seated closest to me. I didn't think a whole lot about it. We all know I've gotten threatening notes before, and I plan to show you when I got a chance. Bill unfolded the paper, and I saw the color drain from his face before he passed it to Karen. If you found this on Monday, why did it take you so long to bring it to me? I looked down at my hands, folding and unfolding them for an uncomfortable moment before looking back up at him. Tuesday morning, I was a little sick, I planned on calling you after work. When I got home that afternoon, I changed clothes, and I was so tired I stretched out for a short nap while I waited for Devon. I ended up sleeping until the next morning. Yesterday, I was so sick, I couldn't go into work and I simply forgot about it. Are you all right? His concern was obvious. I went to see Alexis and she told me what's wrong. Given time it'll pass. I didn't want to tell him I was pregnant yet. I wanted the focus to stay on the note and what it might mean. I went to work this morning, then to the service this afternoon. 
I knew she was one of us only because Rain told me when I called him for information Monday morning, but seeing you at the service reminded me, and made me think of that. I motioned to the paper, now in Terry's hands. I know firsthand that it can happen, that humans can hurt us, but something tells me this wasn't humans. Something is telling me she was killed as a message. Bill looked grim. Because this, he motioned to the note, makes you part of it, I'll share with you what we know. Up until now we had no clue why she was killed or by whom. I looked around the room at all the serious faces after they'd all seen the page I'd given them. And now? Now I have some suspicions. I'll look into them. Bill met my gaze. What about her life? Why her of all people? If she was killed because of me, there has to be some kind of link. We have to have something in common or it makes no sense. I'm not sure offhand, Karen said. All I really know is that she's from a Kitsune family and shifted in her mid-teens like most of us do. I shook my head. I wouldn't know. I haven't spoken to her, well, not much since we got out of school. I'll have my investigators start looking into her friends and associates. We'll look into who she was dating, if she'd had a bad breakup, that kind of thing. Bill looked at me a moment. Are you sure you're all right? You look a little flushed. I looked away, not sure if I was ready to share, but Alexis already knew and probably Hank, so I figured I might as well. I'll be fine. I'm pregnant. The nausea seems to be morning sickness, and so far it seems to come and go at random. I haven't been able to make out a pattern if there is one. That's wonderful. Karen stood to hug me. I let her wrap her arms around me and pulled me tightly against her. Congratulations. Bill smiled at me from his seat. Does this mean you and Devin have sealed your mating? Not yet. We're planning to, but this was a little unexpected. I'd recommend sooner rather than later, Bill advised. Even with a sealed mating, most males become significantly more protective of their mates while pregnant. With as protective as Devon already is, I wouldn't begin to guess how much stronger that instinct could get. I'll talk to Devon about it. We've been home less than a week. I was hoping for a little normalcy, a chance to rest after Seattle, but I guess that's not in the cards. I'm sorry, Bill patted my knee. Though a pregnancy does add some complications for the next trip. You found another non-shifter already? I was surprised. It had taken him weeks to find the first one. I have several leads but I'm not sure where I'll be sending you next. He paused for a moment. Your pregnancy, in addition to the attack in Seattle, means I'm going to need to send more security with you than I do now. In order to get Devin to go along with that, we're either going to have to find a female enforcer, or you'll need to have sealed your mating first. I nodded, not sure what to say, but I was thankful that the next trip out of town would have more security. We talked a while longer before Hank and Alexis took me back to their place with them so I could pick up my car. By the time I made it back to the apartment complex where Devin and I each had apartments, I was dragging, though not quite as bad as I had been on Tuesday. Still, it was all I could do to climb the three floors to my apartment. I didn't want to even think about cooking. I was glad to smell food when I opened the door, it meant that Devin had beat me home and already had dinner started. While I was changing clothes, Devin appeared in the bedroom doorway. You're a little late, dinner's almost ready. He came in and placed a gentle kiss on the back of my neck. I pulled a soft, worn sundress over my head and let it fall around my hips. I left my feet bare as I turned and wrapped my arms around his waist, laying my head against his shoulder. I went over to Bill's after the service, and then Hank and Alexis took me home with them so I could pick up my car. I rubbed my face against the soft cotton of his t-shirt. Service? Yeah. I went to Annie's funeral today. He wrapped his arms around me, his hands sliding up and down my back, comforting me. I would have gone with you if I had known. I'm sorry, I didn't think to ask. I looked up at him, propping my chin against his chest. I got a ride with Brenda to the church. 
Did you know Annie was Kitsune? Rain told me the first morning, but I forgot to mention it. He shook his head and looked surprised. No, I had no clue. A scowl formed on his face. That note. Have you told Bill about it yet? I gave it to him this afternoon. They agree. Killing Annie might have been some kind of message, but we don't know what exactly. Bill said he'd look into it. I don't like it. His arms tightened around me. I don't either, but I have other things to worry about than vague threats. He bent down and placed a soft kiss on my lips. Hungry. Starving and so glad I don't have to cook. He took one hand and pulled me into the other room. Coming up the stairs, I could only think about how I didn't want to cook tonight. Do you know how nice it is not to have to? He chuckled. I do. I remember more than a few nights when I didn't eat because it would have meant cooking, and I just couldn't make myself do it. He sat on the sofa and pulled me onto his lap. Wrapping his arms around me, he seemed content just to hold me close. Today I told Bill and Karen that I'm pregnant. I said in a small voice. What did they say? He kept his voice neutral. Congratulations. Karen was excited. Bill asked if we'd sealed our mating yet. Why did he want to know? There was a sudden tension in his voice, a wariness that hadn't been there before. I took a deep breath and let it out slowly. He said a lot of mated males become a great deal more protective when their mates are pregnant. As protective as you already are, he doesn't know now much worse it might get as long as our mating remains unsealed. I felt him nod, his arms still snug around me. He also said that for my next trip out of town our mating will either have to be sealed, or he'll have to find a female enforcer. He's replacing me? Devon sounded angry at the idea. No. He said because of what happened in Seattle and with me pregnant, he'll send a second enforcer with us. I felt some of the tension drain from Devon's body. I wouldn't mind some help, but he has another trip lined up for you already? Devon sounded unhappy at the prospect. No. I was worried about that too. He seems to be planning ahead. I'm glad that's his job and not mine. I rubbed my face against him, inhaling his scent and letting it wrap around me. I said the same thing. Our food should be ready. He slid me off his lap onto the sofa. How about after we eat, we come back in here and curl up together? He stood to go check on dinner. That sounds wonderful. I followed him, in search of food and company. By Saturday morning, I'd mostly come to terms with the fact that I was pregnant, though I couldn't think of it in terms of having a baby yet. Pregnant was as far as I could manage. I was taking it one step at a time. Over the last couple of days, Devin and I had put together a list of questions about pregnancy in general and the differences that being Kitsune might mean. My plan was to call Alexis and get as many answers as she could give me. She may not have children of her own yet, but she was the pack healer and she should be able to answer, at least some of them. I called Alexis, prepared with my list, and when I told her why I was calling, she invited Devin and me to come over so he could hear firsthand and ask about anything that he wanted to know. When I told her that Devin was working, she shifted the invitation to dinner. I accepted and told her we'd be over after he got home. I planned to be ready to go when Devin came in from my parents, but early in the afternoon, I couldn't hold my eyes open and lay down on the sofa to nap for a little while before getting ready. I woke to the sound of Devin's voice. Nikki? Are you here? He called. Dragging my eyes open, I pushed myself upright on the sofa. I'm here. I blinked, trying to think clearly. I didn't mean to wake you. I'd come give you a kiss, but I'm filthy. He held his arms wide so I could see the grime covering his shirt and jeans. Let me get a quick shower, then we'll see about something to eat. He headed for the bedroom and the shower in the attached bathroom. 
I got up and followed. I accepted an invitation to the Jeffreys for dinner tonight. I planned to be ready when you got home, but I got tired. That's okay. You can get ready while I do. He pulled his t-shirt off over his head, revealing his muscular chest and abdomen. I watched the ripple and flow of the muscles under his skin as he kicked off his shoes and started to strip out of the muddy jeans. Do you need a shower too? His voice deepened as he noticed how closely I was watching him. My mouth went dry. I didn't really need a shower, but I couldn't refuse the invitation. Nodding, I quickly shed the tank top and shorts I'd put on that morning and led the way into the attached bathroom.